How are you? Good and yourself? I'm doing well. I appreciate uh, you taking the time out to chat during fight week. Um, how's it going so far? Uh, so far, so good. This uh, city is really cool. Um, yeah, we've been exploring the city, walking around, and uh, yeah, just eyeing food left and right of where uh, where I want to go eat afterwards and uh, all that stuff with the team and the yeah. So, do you like coming to a place to fight that there's those like? Would you prefer that you weren't somewhere that had those sort of distractions like? You know, if you if you go somewhere cool, being a fighter, you got to focus on. You can't be focusing on the food. So, is it a little difficult, or are you kind of used to it at this point? No, it's like it's it's how I'm getting off right now. It's just looking at food, look eye eye in spots. Um, yeah. So I think it's cool, and it's I like being distracted too. It's a, you know, it's, it's something to do throughout the day. I'm out here with the whole entire team, so it's uh, it, it's a cool week. So we're just kind of like shopping, um, checking out spots where we're gonna go eat, and then. All the spots I've checked out so far, it's like I can't possibly get to that amount of food in this short amount of time, but uh, I can't wait. <laughs> Absolutely, and I know a lot of people can't wait for your fight. Um, talk to me about uh, what, we haven't seen you for a little bit, so I guess talk to me about what this past year's been like for you, a couple cancellations, um, and how excited are you to get back in there? Oh, it's been almost a year, and that was like one of the things too, is I was just like, I want to get back before a year, so I started making some call-outs, and uh, Mateus Nikolai and uh, I think Kai Car France are the two I called out, because they're right in between each other, and it was like, are right in between me, and they're, they're unbooked, and it was like, I need to, uh, I don't want these two to fight each other, and me get passed by, and I, I just didn't want to wait any longer, and uh, so I, I called them out, and uh, I was I was fortunate enough that Mateus Nikolai answered the call, and uh yeah, so uh, I'm so excited to be back. I I'm happy that the whole year gap didn't uh, come through. The last year has been uh, been more than frustrating because it's like uh, that I had two fights right off the bat, and I was like, I'm going to have more fights this year than any other year. And uh, uh, with the Askarov fight getting canceled, I, was, I took a short notice against Amir Al-Bazi, and uh, then I broke my wrist in somewhere in that camp, and it was just like it, it ended up just being really frustrating because it was like I'm on a roll, and I'm like I'm about to have three fights right off the bat, and then uh, – that didn't work out. Then I'm like, all right, I'll fight Amir Al-Bazi on a, on a month notice. And uh, then my wrist broke. And then I was like, ah, it went from being like one of the possibly busiest years of my life to being pretty stagnant. And I didn't want that at all. And I guess, how do you deal with that mentally? I know injuries are something that you've dealt with before, but was this particularly frustrating just because of the fact that you started that year so hot and then to kind of have to take a break? Yeah, and it was really frustrating because uh, I was going to fight Asker Askarov and uh, I, w I was pretty much all on weight at that point. I was I walking around, one. I woke up 127 that morning and it was just like, oh yeah, this is, I'm, I'm gonna earn the opportunity to go up in the rankings, prove a statement that I'm one of the top flyweights in the world. And uh, then it was just like a uh, uh, setback after setback. And uh, yeah, it just turned out to be a little bit of frustrating, but it, there's a lot of growth in there and there's a lot of opportunities and it gave me a lot of time to prepare for Nikolai. And uh, I already had him kind of in my head after he beat Matt Snell. And I'm like, okay, this could be the possibly next fight. And uh, just navigating where I go from there and who other who, who else are the top five opponents that were, uh, were free. And there was a lot of them at the time. So uh I was just trying to navigate my career, and that's why I was like so desperate to make a call. I don't even like calling people out like that, but I was like, I, I needed to because the moment I called them out, the next day I had a fight, and I was like, perfect. I should have done that months ago, honestly. So, uh, yeah. And do you feel like uh, they just announced, or Hunter Campbell told ESPN that it's going to be Moreno versus Pantoja in July? Do you feel like if you go out there and get a win in this fight, like you versus the winner of that, or? Yeah, and I heard Figgy's uh, staying at flyweight, which is which is cool too. But it's like. Who who else is there? Um, if Figgy doesn't stay at flyweight, then I'm the next highest uh, up there. I mean, Kai Car France is ahead of me, but uh, he's coming off a loss. Or uh, he's coming off a loss, and uh, and I already beat him. So it's like, who else? Who else is there? It's, uh, I go out there and make a statement. I think this is a title contention fight, and at the very least, I'm I'm weighing in as a backup for that fight. So uh, I don't really see other any other result. And it's like if I. If I don't, um, if I go beat Mateus Nikolai and I go make a statement, which I've done in all my in all my UFC wins, is I've made statements. It's I, I don't know who else would be in contention for that. Great, thanks. Appreciate. You. Hey, Brandon. <clears throat> What's up, brother? Um, what? So when, when the fight with uh, Askar Askarov got canceled the day of uh, the day before, like 
how do you deal with that? Like, do you just like get straight on a plane and go home, or like do you like mope around Vegas? Like, 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 what, how do you deal with that? Oh, I did, I did it all. I went and stole his lunch out of the out of the, <laughs> the kitchen. I, I was going through and I was grabbing my lunch because they're like, because I was telling him like, I'm gonna weigh in because I wanted to weigh in no matter what. I was like, I'm already on weight. All I had to do is lose a pound. That's easy money, you know. Like, I can lose that pound in, a, in an hour, like less than an hour, twenty minutes, whatever it is. I just wanted to weigh in and. Uh, they're like, don't weigh in. You don't need to weigh in. This, this, and that. And I'm like, well, I want to get paid. So it's like, I want to weigh in. So I wanted to make that statement. And then they're like, don't weigh in. Everybody's telling me not to weigh in. So it's like, screw it. I'm not going to weigh in. I go grab my lunch out of the, the refrigerator and I see Asker, Asker. I was I'm like, oh, I'm taking this one too. He doesn't need that shit. So I was pissed, man. I, I, I was super pissed. And, uh, you know, um, I was just bitter. It was, it was an opportunity. It seemed like a really good opportunity for me and a, a good opportunity for me to make a statement in the flyweight division. And, uh, yeah, it, it was just not a good day for me, and uh, I was walking around bitter, so I did leave that day, and that sucks. Uh, I wish I didn't because my uh, teammate was fighting Cub Swanson, Jonathan Martinez, and it's like my teammate's fighting Cub Swanson, and I had an opportunity to go watch that, but I knew I was not in the right mind state to be in the same hotel at that time, so I, I immediately jumped on the first plane back and went home, and uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was a bad day for me that day for sure. Um, you know, with it being a potential number one contender fight, but you're on the prelims, so what the hell's up with that? Yeah, you're telling me, man. I was wondering that same thing too. You, we're gonna go uh, with with all the fights on the card. I know, like, I have a lot of teammates on there, and that are all, that are on there, and they all deserve that spot, and they're all gonna make statements. So it's it, it's cool. It's cool to see that, and it's cool to be like, okay, I can fight, and then watch them fight, and uh, I'm I'm really stoked about that. Um, that being said is I think we're the second highest ranked people on this whole entire card and it's like if we're trying to build up the flyweight division I think uh, I think putting us in the in the limelight would be a good idea especially considering how much title implications this fight does have so um, yeah yeah I thought I thought that was a little weird and uh, it's just like if we're building up this division let's build it up and if we're going to build up this division let's go put the most exciting fighter in the flyweight division in one of the top spots and that's me it's like I, I've proven statement I've made statements time Time after time, and uh, I think I proved at the very least I'm the most exciting flyweight in this division. And it's like if I have to go out there and do that again, then uh, well, I'm gonna do that no matter what. I don't really have a choice. I'm gonna do that no matter what because that's who I am. But that being said, is uh, I don't think I deserve to be on a prelim uh, on any of these cards, especially a fight night, and especially when I'm one of the highest ranked fighters on the card. And uh, you're fighting on a, on a fight card with Max Holloway. Are you a fan of Max Holloway? Oh yeah, yeah. He just uh, he just said he can't wait to watch me fight. I'm like, I was looking at my cornerman Clay over here, and I'm like, dang, did you hear that? I was like, let's go. <laughs> I was like, why were you not recording that interaction right there, man? I needed all that. So uh, that was pretty dope, man. That, uh, obviously, I'm. A, I think everybody's a huge Max Holloway fan. Uh, Max Holloway fan, but uh, yeah, just little moments like this and being in the UFC is like it's still unreal to me. I still have these moments where I'm like, dang, I can't even believe like. Uh, somebody recognizes me or whatever it is. So it's like when, when you get like uh, blessed by your peers or especially the Bless Express, you know what I'm saying? So th that, that's always like, uh, uh, I'm doing the right things. I'm, I'm, validate I'm getting validated in these little weird ways, but it's also just like, if I, was a, if I was a boring flyweight, nobody would say that, but I go out there and make statements. So it's just a, another proof to point that's like what I'm doing is working and, uh, and uh, I hope one day the UFC sees that because... Uh, I feel like I should be in one of these top spots. And finally, if you if you had your choice, would you fight Moreno or or, or Pantoja next? I fight Pantoja for sure. Um, that's definitely a. Uh something I think about every day. I feel like uh, the Moreno victory, um, I was in a good position until uh, my shoulder dislocated. I felt like I was on top of him, ground and pounding and uh, attacking a submission. And then my shoulder dislocated. And uh, um, with the Pantoja, I have zero excuses. Uh, I just... Oh, I just hate myself for it. So uh, definitely Pantoja. I definitely want that want that fight back somehow, some way. That's the only fight I've ever felt like I really lost. Uh, I, I feel like I've been held down throughout my career. I've been like uh, nullified. I've been stalled out. Um, but with Pantoja, I have zero excuses with any of that. He he brought the fight to me and ended up losing and uh, ended up getting finished. And uh, I don't ever want that to happen. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your time.